Today we'll be painting the Jabera flower and in this video you will be learning how we're going to be using your brush to manipulate and create some of these petals in a very loose way. Now before we actually go into our video, I want to share with you an intention and a mindset to help to shape this entire process and video for you. A lot of the time when we enter an art piece, we have a destination in mind, especially when you are coming on board on a YouTube video, most of the time you already are thinking about the kind of art that you want to produce, the things that you want to learn, and you have got this running to-do list in your mind. So I want you to take a step back and just find some time to pause and connect with the reason why you enjoy watercolour. I want you to ask yourself what watercolour feels like for you, what you like about watercolour, and how you can also embrace watercolour as it allows the paint to move, as it allows the paint to spread on your paper, and also for you to begin to trust the process and embrace whatever happens on the paper today as you're painting together with me because sometimes when you least expect it, the beauty will emerge on its own. So without further ado, let's dive in. Hello and hi, my name is Julian. Welcome to my YouTube channel and every week what I do is I paint something from the flower color guide and today I'm going to be painting the Jabera daisy. So these flowers are so fun and colorful. I'm going to do one in the exact same color and I'm going to try and replicate this on my paper. So come along with me and today the exercise that we are going to do is mainly going to be dry on wet. So I'm going to start off by mixing my colours and what I'm going to be doing as well is by spraying down my paint. Spraying down my paint gives me the opportunity to activate the paint that is in front of me. I'm going to be mixing my colours so I'm going to try and get a nice orangey kind of red. Whenever I mix my colours, one thing that I enjoy doing is getting a variation of the colour in warm and cool tones. And what I'm using right now is Sennelier's Red and I am going to create a few different variations in it. As you know, you can vary the colour also by diluting it with water. So this gives you the opportunity to get lighter values. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of yellow just to add to it. And I'm just going to get a very nice coral kind of orangey coral here and I'm taking a very small amount because I'm just testing to see if this is the color ratio that I like before I go on to mix a bigger batch and then subsequently I'm also going to take just a tinge of blue just to get a slight purpley shade for me to add the shadows in the flower but it's still predominantly red so like I said, we're just going to get a tint, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to use my brush. So I'm using a silver black velvet brush and this brush is half inch square flat brush. I am going to start off by just making some marks on the paper. And when you're painting, you're definitely just making marks. So I'm just going to move across and as I'm doing that, making these strokes. I'm kind of moving towards the center here. So I'm just assuming that there's a center right there and I'm just moving around it. I'm just creating the shape of the flowers while also creating um, some movement with the petal. So I'm not too fussed about it being or looking perfect. It's okay if some of them are disjointed and not connected. We can go back to it later. So right now we're, do, we're painting in an extremely light value. You can always darken the value by adding more paint and less water to your brush. I'm now adding a little bit of orange and I noticed that in my orange palette I had some blue here. So this is why my palette has started to look 
bit more blue gray which I kind of like as well so we'll see what we do with that so that's the thing with painting you discover new things as you go along and sometimes you know things don't go your way but that's okay um, you have the license to decide how you want to move forward from there and then I'm just gonna go through with a little bit of a darker tone and some parts of it are wet so it, you get that bleed I'm going back in with um, slightly darker tones just adding them towards the edges maybe a few towards the center so in watercolor we paint from light to dark and it's good to go into nature and just observe where you see the darks and very often the darks are in the middle of the flower so that's where you're going to place most of them the rest of the darks can be found in the middle in the center between petals so that's where you add them all around to give it that texture and i'm going to go for the next one over here and maybe i want it to look a little bit bigger this time i added some yellow and orange to it so it's got a nice kind of coral look and feel i'm going to go a bit bigger and just go with really expressive marks some of it is dry i went back into my cup to just dilute it and just get really light colors from that same color palette and i'm just alternating um making marks because the flower that i'm seeing has pretty um it's not so even you know the colors and at the same time the petals are also moving around so much so feel free to move your brush around change up the value don't be afraid to just try new things you never know um, what your brush can do so I discovered the use of the flat brush randomly while I was doing patterns and then I realized that hey the flat brush was actually really helpful to help me to paint and right now actually while I am while this area is still wet I'm removing some areas to showcase a petal or two and what I'm doing is I'm lifting so I'm basically lifting which means that there's some petals that are lighter it shows the shadow and again it shows quite a fair bit of depth as you do that then I can just go in and again add some of the darker tones and if I want to again lift the areas that were lifted before I can go back in and do the same repeat it make sure you rub off the paint that you lifted on the paper towel so that you're not spreading the paint around and I want to also create some messy petals in the middle here where some of them are kind of sticking out in different directions so i'm just moving my brush around i'm not really fussed about where it lands i want it to look as natural as possible and then i'm going to do one up here so that's going to be again with the lighter tone the same paint colors that I've used and I'm holding my brush pretty high up I like to do that because it gives me the capacity to move around and actually I'm painting standing up so you don't see it but I'm actually painting standing up and one thing I like you to know is that you know usually the flowers at the back are kind of background flowers they shouldn't have so much detail so I like to paint them a lot lighter it gives the opportunity for the other flowers in the front to kind of show off their colors a bit more I'm going to mix a little bit more colors on my palette I'm adding my Sunila red and vermilion hue and Vermilion Hue is actually from Holbein, while the other one is from Sunila. Okay, I'm, I'm not pronouncing it well, but it's probably called Sunelier. So I apologize for those of you who are 
into pronunciation so I'm, I'm still learning and I believe everyone else is now I'm just going in with darker shades and I'm still leaving the center kind of empty to give it some you know um, because we're gonna add in the stamens later on I don't want to add too much shadow also because I like to allow the bleeds and blends to kind of just show on their own this one on a, just a lighter shade for the one here doesn't have to be really precise and i'm going to mix my green now so i've got chrome oxide green which is one of my favorite greens because it has such a nice earthy tone to it so if you like the name again it's called chrome oxide green by sennelier and whenever I mix my greens, I often add a tinge of red in so it bridges the red and the green together when they are on paper and you don't want it to be too stark and here it's still a little wet so it's bleeding in a little and that's fine because that's the effect that I wanted anyway I'm gonna do out the stem, you know stems don't have to be straight, you can make it curved and uneven again gives it a bit more character sometimes they're broken so just like here I created some broken stems I want to lighten the value and just create a bit um, lighter area where it was broken so it kind of connects everything allows the eye to see it clearly maybe right now I want to define things a little bit more and I'm just going to add a much darker burgundy kind of red it's almost like purple so here I've got my mineral blue mixed with Sinelier red and I got this color so the thing about color mixing is that it can be quite tricky and it takes time for you to figure out your process and I guess figure out how you want or where you can drop in paint. Color mixing um, took me a while as well to learn and I'm still learning a lot from color so it's definitely not done yet and where I, what I'm doing is I'm adding these red purples down closer in the middle and between the petals so there is where you get some of the shadow and what I'm painting right now is the shadow. I'm not painting the petals anymore. I'm painting the shadow so or even um, back petals you know sometimes there are petals at the back that are dark because they've been hidden by petals in the front I'm also giving the viewer the opportunity to kind of see that the light is casted in this direction because you notice that for both flowers i've got the light more on this side so i'm not gonna add too much i realized that throughout this I've been using the same brush and because up here is a lot lighter I'm going to lighten my value my color value and I'm just going to put it down just a touch most of it's going to be closer to the middle again so it's okay if it doesn't look like anything at the moment because you're slowly defining flower so now I'm going back to add more red to it and you can see the more red I add to that purple mixture it just becomes darker and darker and closer I want to go into this flower now to give it a tinge of definition I'm going to go in with a very very light value and you can see that I've diluted down the red and basically put it down so it's very very light I also don't want it to have too much water so I'm going to dab it along my paper towel and I'm just going to put in some definition again I don't really want it to look like it has too much details because the details should really come from the rest of the painting instead but it's good to still vary your darks and your lights so that this gives the viewer an idea of where your petals lie and here's the thing about um, adding dark values you have to make it consistent throughout the painting so if right now here is too dark I kind of have to add a little bit more dark tones along the way just so that it is a bit more consistent 
and it doesn't look too stark. I'm adding it close to the base of the plant because I know that that's mostly where the shadows lie. I'm going to change my brush to a smaller brush, my size um, 6 Silver Black Velvet. I love the Black Velvet series because they give you such nice thin lines. And I'm just going to go in because this flower is so much smaller. You need a smaller brush to give the, those details. And I'm just filling up some areas because maybe I felt like it was too light a color to give it some interest. So one thing that I want to add on is some neon colors and I'm going to take out my neon palette here. This is from Kuretake, my favorite and the neon colors give it a bit of a pop. I'm going to use my small brush again, pick up some of the color and add it in. I'm basically mixing it with my pre-existing color so that the neon is not too stark. I want it to be somewhat gentle on the eye as well because I know that neon colors can be very stark for people. So I'm just going to add in some parts there and I use neon shades to kind of represent the shadow or light. I'm not going to add too much as well but I kind of want to add some lines the neon colors. I am going to add my stamens in the middle to give it the detail and the colors that I'm going to choose is I'm actually going to pick a brown and this one here is um, sepia warm. And I've got to just put it down here to see how it looks with the red. And I'm going to dab it in the center. I want to do it further on this side a little. So it gives the illusion that the flower is facing outwards a bit more. I like to fill my centers. I don't really leave gaps. And I can always lift off paint from the middle to reveal a bit of the transparency at the bottom. One thing I see about these jiberas is that they do have some irregular dots all around. So I'm just going to add them in and I'm not making it symmetrical. I'm kind of just spraying it all around. I want it to be a bit more dry so that I can again add another layer of it. Now this one here will not have that because it's um it's currently not showing the stamen. However, I actually want to showcase some of the petals that are folding into the stamen and I'm going to make sure that I'm using a very very dry brush to do this. I want my paint to be relatively thick and I'm going to try and add a few random strokes here and there. It's almost as though the petals are kind of moving in and out and I'm going to go on to increase the depth in my stems. So again I'm going back to my chrome oxide and this time I'm going to have it in a pretty thick consistency, not too light because I've already got the light down. I want to go in with a darker tone to add depth. And you can always go over it if you want. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm literally just going to go over it because I feel like the stem is so faded in the background. I kind of want it to stand out a bit more. 
gonna go over it and I'm just gonna come down I'll make it even darker so I've got another hue of green here and that's greenish umber another favorite of mine by Senelie and I'm just gonna add it um, up here where the base of the stem is and a little in between the stems And I'm now gonna go in again with my chrome oxide but I'm not going to have it so dark on this one I want it to be a bit lighter just thickening the stems a bit because the flowers are big so you don't want the stems to be too small also Gonna move it closer to where the petals are so it's connected but you know you don't have to do that sometimes if you're painting loosely you can just decide to do it in a different way darkness here by the base so it's cohesive Okay, next one. So again, I'm just going over it. And, you know, by going over it and darkening the value, what you're doing essentially is glazing, which is an important skill to help you to troubleshoot when you want to darken your colors. So now that I've added in my greens a bit more, my pink and my red pops as well. And a part of me feels like I want to add something to the flower a little. But I'm also not sure how. So instead, I'm going to add a bit of beige. So this is a beige color by Holbein. June Brilliant number 2. And I'm just going to scatter it along the stems just to give it a bit of funkiness. I like to do that. Add a bit of me in my flowers. I'm adding it here to the flower on the top as well. I'm contemplating adding in a little blue around the stamens here and I'm, I'm liking the idea because by adding that blue it gives some highlight and this blue is Lavender by Holbein so watercolor dries 30 to 40 percent lighter than it is so make sure that your colors are nice and dark you have a bit more pop you have more opportunities to showcase your colors and your work a bit more i decided to go more where i've added some of that blue i glazed it over the petal and because it was existing with red at the bottom when i put that blue over kind of gave me a lavender purple kind of shade that's what glazing does as well you're basically mixing colors over so i'm just going in adding in some details just to define some areas in my painting Part of me feels like this flower here is, is dead. So I'm going to just glaze over a new kind of coral color. To give it a bit of life. You see by glazing, you kind of give the flower a new life. But you have to also be very careful of the color that you choose to glaze over. So sometimes you might choose a color where when they are glazed over, it ends up looking muddy. So you have to be very mindful of that. I think by adding that, it kind of brightened it a little. I'm happier with what it looks like now. 
and I'm also deciding that I'd like to stop very soon. So earlier on I said I wanted to darken the stamens. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to darken it here. I'm just adding in again Van Dyke Brown. I'm just really just adding it in. I'm not diluting it with any water at all. There are a few parts are a bit darker around. So I'm just going to add a tingy bit just to give it a bit of definition. I want to do so especially here. You know, calling it done is one of the hardest parts because you could keep adding and adding and adding and adding and you don't get done. You don't. Now in my palette, I also like to keep just white gouache handy just in case I want to layer some areas that are showing like it's a bit more opaque. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint and I also hope that you painted along during this session gave you the opportunity to see how this is done I really enjoyed doing this together with you and I hope that we do this more together I enjoyed painting together with you today if you are painting and find that parts of your painting did not turn out as you wanted it to Remember that the beauty that emerges from your painting can be transferred into your next painting moving forward. If you've got any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in this channel, please feel free to drop that in the comments below. I'd love to interact with you, especially if you have used your time to paint together with me. Hit the subscribe button to make sure that you get notifications when new videos come live. I will be putting up a video every Monday. I'll see you then.